What's going on? I got another quick tutorial for you. Well, it's kind of quick. It's fairly simple and it's something that not a lot of people understand. So recently, oh, I've been really diving into headshots and getting into headshots and stuff like that. And one of the things that I come into trouble with is reflection, glare on lenses uh, and how to get rid of that gross anti-glare coating that happens on photos. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to change that, how to fix it by using Lightroom, Photoshop, and just a little bit of quick touch-ups. I mean, you can have it done in 15 minutes and it's a lot easier than you really think. So let's dive into it. I'm done talking. If you like this, hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment where you're watching from. And don't forget to share it with your buddies. Maybe even a follow. Whatever. Let's go. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to actually... Uh, kind of clean up your photo a little bit here. So I'm gonna bring the highlights uh, or the shadows up just a little bit. I'm gonna soften it. Now this has nothing to do with the whole glare thing. I just wanted to clean it up a little bit. What you're gonna do is you're gonna right click, you're gonna edit in and you're gonna bring it over into Photoshop. This is where you're gonna do most of the work. Lightroom is really just kind of my anchor. You could probably import directly into Photoshop and work right there with it and be perfectly fine. But I like to use Lightroom as an anchor point and kind of get back and forth to that. So once Lightroom or once Photoshop opens it, we have our photo in here. First thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna create a new layer. We always create a new layer. We're gonna name that layer. And now because I'm screen recording, this is a little slower than it typically would be. Um, we're gonna name this um, original. That way, in case we mess anything up, we always have an original photo to go back on. Actually, we should call this edit. And this one should be original. If I can change it, there we go. Original, then we'll relock it. That way we don't mess it up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to our edit layer uh, and we're gonna add another layer on top of that. So we're gonna add a new layer. We're gonna name this color. And this is super simple, guys. I'm telling you, it's really easy. Now, I highly suggest getting a stylus tablet like a Wacom or a Bamboo or something like that because drawing in these fine lines is a lot easier when you use a pen instead of trying to use a mouse or a trackpad on a laptop or anything like that. So what you're gonna do, you created this layer. You're going to change the blending options of this to color. Now, we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna get real uptight and close with him. And what we're doing is we're gonna grab our brush and we're literally just gonna start painting in color where this purple is. And the way that I do it is I hit my option, which I also think it's Alt on uh, Windows, um, and kind of grab my eyedropper and find a color that's close to that area. I have my brush set to zero hardness, 100% flow, 100% opacity. And we're just selecting colors that are, that are around where we're going. And we're literally just gonna color it in. It's really this simple to get rid of the weird purple blue areas that come with glasses. Now you don't wanna just select once, uh, select with your eyedropper once, you want to keep going because clearly I wouldn't wanna use like this darkness over here in this light area. So you're gonna keep selecting in the vicinity of where you are. That way you know that these colors are gonna match And you just kind of just keep coloring around, keep going. Until you've gotten rid of all the purple. As you can see, my eyedropper keeps popping up because I'm still just sampling colors here. And I'm still going. And you can, you can select the color in the range that you were already in too. Like, you know, you just colored an area use that color range to kind of keep going. Basically, you just want to make it look natural. Like up here, this is his skin tone is a little gray up here because of that. So I'm gonna kind of add some color into his skin here while I'm at it. And what I would do is I would probably take the flow down to like 20% and then kind of just add a little bit of color overall in this area. There we go. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna leave my flow a little low too so I can see what's going on. If, you, if you're if you adding in color or painting or doing any any sort of real effects like this, 
I personally always leave my flow at like 25 to 30%. And then if I need to, I just go back over it again because I would rather do little adjustments instead of big giant adjustments. So this area is still a little gray down here. So we're just gonna give them a little bit of color there. Okay, let's go over to the other eye. We're gonna do the same thing here. Grab some color. Bring a little bit of color around his whole eye here. There we go. Get rid of this purple. So I can bring my flow up just a little. Now this is something I would typically take my time on, but for the sake of making this video, I don't wanna bore you guys with just you hearing me heavy breathe for a while while I color in, so. And we're gonna do this last section over here. So the next step after this is going to be getting rid of these sections that look kinda awkward, so. Let me finish coloring in this. And it's really peaceful. It's like a coloring book, but digitally and a real person. All right, so there we go. We got it all colored out. So as you can see, it already looks way better. Um, let me back out and show you the difference here. So this is with without the color grade or the color underlay overlay. And then this is without uh, or with, I mean, it, I would send this away already. I don't mind this harsh line right here. These ones I, I can barely even see. So, but I am going to go in and I'm going to try to clean up this little line right here, this little line and kind of just blend this in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my edit layer and I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. I'm at 11% flow, hardness zero, and then I'm gonna get even closer here. And I basically, I just wanna blend it. I don't want to make it look really harsh, so that's why I'm at like 11% flow, because I just want to kinda blend these lines a little bit, little blurred lines. And just like that, that line is pretty much gone. I mean, you can still kinda see it but it's not like noticeable like it was. So let's go over here and let's do the same thing. Now this one's a little tricky cause he's got the, the eyebrow hair here, but I mean, you can honestly see that just by blending those lines a little bit. And all I'm doing is just very softly, very lightly just kind of blurring these lines. If I wanted to, I could take and kind of extend a eyebrow down here. Boom, just like that. So now what, I, what I've done, let me uh, just throw these into a folder together here. What I've done is I've taken this and I've taken a photo that is purple, has reflections, looks awkward, everything, and cleaned it up just like that. Purple, ugly, nothing, good to go. Hit com control or command save. That's gonna save it. It'll bring it back over to Lightroom. This is the way that I do it. Bring it back over to Lightroom, hit export. The photo's done, good to go. And you have saved yourself the trouble of being really annoyed by purple glasses all over the place. So it's that simple. It really is. Um, I don't really think it's too in depth where somebody's not going to be understand it even if they don't understand photoshop hope this video helped you guys hope you get information from it i hope you can get out there and create some better headshots and get rid of uh, that weird glare this is a problem that i had for a long time so i dove in i tried to figure it out and this is what i came up with talk to you guys in the next video peace